Welcome to Posh and Plastic, the Y2K Nostalgia Podcast. Here's Amber and Kylie. Wind up, wind down, and let's hit rewind. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Posh and Plastic. I'm here with my Mia Thermopolis to my Lily Moskovitz, Kylie. Hey guys. This is part two of our Lizzie McGuire series. So if you guys haven't seen our episode from last Thursday, we covered the Lizzie McGuire series. So go back and give us a listen for that. But we'll roll right into our, what are you binging? Kylie, what are you binging this week? So this week I've been binging the new Quiet on Set docuseries. Um, It's available on HBO Max and I believe Prime as well. So that's the series where they're going into the dark side of Nickelodeon and things that the cast and crew have been through with Predators. So it's very dark Mm -hmm. if you're going to watch it. I told Amber to have a palate cleanser, but that was what I binged. (laughs) How about you? Uh, (laughs) Mine is... (laughs) Definitely not any more educational. Probably more brain melting, if anything. I've been binging two things, really. So Gossip Girl, my love. Of course. (laughs) And then also, I've been going back and watching some Jersey Shore. (laughs) Oh, goodness. The original, not not Family Vacay, the original. T-shirt time. (laughs) Where's the beach? (laughs) Uh I've stalked my whole life on the boardwalk. Oh my god, the stage five clinger. She was crazy, but she came it's so funny because she came back at one point too and she was like, You made me look crazy. Girl. Girl. No, you made yourself look crazy. (laughs) I was trying to have a good summer. God bless me for trying to have fun. Well, before we dive totally into Lizzie McGuire movie, we've got to do our new phone who this. My quote that I brought today is, drink water upside down and put a pencil in your mouth. So without revealing it, because we'll wait till the end of our episode, but do you know this one, Amber? I think I know this one. Okay. I (laughs) I heard it today and I was like, ooh, I should bring that to the podcast. But I darn it. it. it, (laughs) No, it's a good one, honestly, if I hadn't been watching that fairly recently, too, if it's what I think it is. Okay. (laughs) It is. is. I know you know it. (laughs) Okay. Well, we'll give everybody else the the episode to try to figure out what that is from. But let's dive into this. So again, be sure to go back and listen to last week's episode on Lizzie McGuire, the series. But today we're going into the movie. And we all know the series was iconic. But how did we land this movie? There's actually a story to this. Do you know the story, Amber? No. So I'm excited to hear it. Okay. So Hillary Duff's mother was her manager, a little Kris Jenner. Businesswoman knew what she was doing. Obviously. I mean, she got Hillary into this role. Hillary, we all know, was working really hard on the G- Disney Channel. She obviously was working as Lizzie McGuire. And then Cadet Kelly, she did the Disney Channel original movie. Then Disney Channel decided to have the Disney Channel stars with the Circle of Life. She was a part of that. And that is really when the Disney Channel stars blew up. And so she was booked and busy. She would do a bunch of commercials for Disney Channel, like the whole, I'm Hilary Duff and you're watching Disney Channel. And if you guys have not seen the behind the scenes of those and like the outtakes, feel free to look it up. It's kind of sad. You can tell she's really tired. Uh, And then there was the Express Yourself commercials. And then, of course, we all know she was doing music for Hollywood Records, which is owned by Disney. And she did like I Can't Wait and the Lizzie McGuire soundtrack and Metamorphosis was under Hollywood Records. So she was doing a lot for Disney. And her mother realized just how much money Disney was making off of just Lizzie McGuire alone. And her daughter was not being compensated properly on that. So she asked the corporation to renegotiate the salary of Hillary and they pretty much laughed at her. 
So she said, fine. Pulled her out and said, we're ending our contract. Like, we're not renewing. So that's when Disney had to scram. That's why we have so many episodes. I believe it's 34 episodes in season two of Lizzie McGuire. Mm -hmm. So they squeezed all they could out of her and then also said, we're also going to make a movie. Wow. Wow. I mean, they really wrung her out. For real. I mean, they knew that they had some gold here, right? They knew that that Hilary Duff was popular, that her music was obviously popular. But they saw her and they were like, dollar signs. Yeah. She was an idol. She was a tween idol. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember idolizing her for sure. So that is like the little background of how we got this movie. What also stands out is Disney decided to make this a feature film. Mm -hmm. which was pretty unusual huge i mean like you saw even stevens which i would consider it being like a sister show to lizzie mcguire they came out around the same time they got a disney channel original movie they didn't get a feature film so this was very special yeah i think like you said that that i didn't know that they were negotiating or at least hillary's mom was trying to negotiate I feel like this was part of that negotiation. It was like, you do these couple of things for us, and instead of another DCOM, we'll make your movie a feature film because of how popular Hillary actually is. Yeah, that's a good theory. And then everybody wins because everybody makes money. Disney obviously makes more, but so does Hillary, in a way. Yeah, that's a good point. So (laughs) that's a background, and we'll go ahead and like dive in to the synopsis. Today, we're going to do a full run through of our rewatch so if you want to pause and go watch the movie so you can freshen up or we're gonna walk through scene by scene you can just walk through with us however you want to do it we start with the opening credits with matt using a remote control car throwback trying to videotape to expose lizzie being embarrassing he gets in and Lizzie is dancing and singing in her room to Atomic Kitten's rendition of The Tide is High, all while animated Lizzie is showing us the opening credits. So we see she's also going to be a big part of this movie, as she should. And the scene ends with Lizzie losing her footing and falling into her shower wrapped in the shower curtain. Yes. Okay. So First of all, the whole beginning scene, so campy 2000s, right? Like singing, mm-hmm. dancing. I I definitely did this back in the day. Did you do this? Did you <laughs> have concerts in your room? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like dance routines, mic, you name it. It was all a production. Exactly. I mean, oh, I felt that moment. And also on top of it, love that song. Forgot it existed. Everything about this is just true 2000s. Even down to her outfit, which was Argyle, which true 2000s oh my fashion. Gosh. Yes, very 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, peak, right? 2003 was like peak 2000s, where mm-hmm. I feel like everything was just exploding. And the family then makes it to Lizzie's eighth grade graduation. And mom expresses her concerns about Lizzie going to Italy on a school trip in classic mom nature. Then Lizzie meets up with Gordo to chat. And this is where we are informed that Miranda will not be at graduation because she's in Mexico City. So we know now not to expect her in this movie, as many fans wondered at this time due to her not being in a handful of the final episodes of the series. Did you have like a really fancy eighth grade graduation? I define fancy. Like... (laughs) A big stage with the curtain and all of this jazz, like, in her school. No, we used the football field. (laughs) And we walked across it. (laughs) Yeah, we did that, too. And I even felt weird about that. I'm like, why does this... Are we doing Why is this necessary? Yeah. It's not high school. That was how I felt, too. Honestly, I was just happy to wear a, like, pretty dress. But I didn't get the weird graduation thing we were doing. Because what was I graduating from? I still had school left to do. (laughs) I didn't like my dress. Um, Actually, in the TikTok we made, so if you guys are wondering the TikTok, uh, go check out the one I titled My my Experience with Seventeen Magazine. Um, (laughs) The photo I revealed (laughs) on that was me celebrating my eighth grade promotion. (laughs) 
So that's what I wore. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's so funny. You called it a great promotion. That's what they called it. It wasn't a graduation. It was a promotion. Yeah. You were getting promoted to high school. It was so weird. Why did they do that? They Because we, were, we didn't care. I, I know the guys didn't no. care. We were 13, 14 years old. I just wanted to get out of the baking hot sun. That yeah. Day. I was so miserable just sitting there and what, waiting for everybody. And my school is pretty big. Back into the graduation before the ceremony starts, Kate walks up to Lizzie and Gordo and she <laughs> sees Lizzie's sleeves poking out of her gown and describes this dress to Lizzie and unzips her, revealing the outfit and calls her an outfit repeater because she wore it to the spring dance. After this, Lizzie's informed that the class president, Margaret Chen, couldn't make it. And since Lizzie is the class treasurer she's next in line to give the commencement speech and she gets nervous mid-speech goes to get some water in lizzie's true fashion slips again this time ripping the stage curtain down so the opening scene with the shower curtain was really foreshadowing for this. For my notes, I was literally going to type that out, but I had seen that you'd already noted that down. And I was like, I don't even have to put the same thing. We were on the same wave wavelength as far as that. I never realized that until like sitting here typing out as I'm watching. I mm -hmm. never made that analysis that there was so much foreshadowing in this movie. Yeah, there's a lot actually, if you really sit and think about it. Mm -hmm. But no, back to when she goes, Lizzie McGuire, you're an outfit repeater. I think my favorite is when the animated Lizzie goes, maybe I'm an outfit repeater, but you're an outfit rememberer. And that's more pathetic. No, really, though. <laughs> yeah, I so I'm not gonna lie. I rewatched it again today. Yeah, so I could be fresh again without having to take notes. And I remembered that and like laughing at it because she's, <laughs> she's right. <laughs> right like but she's not wrong Kate is obsessed with Lizzie and it's kind of weird like you're the popular girl and so you shouldn't care about Lizzie interesting point but they were besties at one point so maybe it's like coming from that because they always owed back to the fact that they were besties at one point like in the series it was just you you heard it all the time that they used to be friends yeah but when I was in school, if I had a falling out with a friend, it was like, I don't even notice you. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm too cool. I'm better off. So it's just weird, her obsession with Lizzie. So we're now at the airport and Lizzie cannot wait to leave the country after what just happened. And here we are introduced to the new high school principal, Miss Ungermeyer. Gordo shares that getting in good with her is his ticket to the Ivy League. He goes to introduce himself and express his excitement for the trip when she calls him. Go ahead, Amber. I think it means a sneaky brown noser with a hidden agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Had to let you have that line. I freaking love Miss Ungermeyer. I mean, she's got some classic lines in general. I think my favorite is our introduction of her, where she comes in and all the parents are like all concerned about their 13, 14 year old kids going to Italy, which we'll talk about that in a second. Again, brings it back to the whole eighth grade graduation thing. Why are you going to Italy? But I think my my favorite line is, attention parents, shut your pie holes. We're old enough to imagine ourselves as parents. Imagine you are trusting your child with this new figure in their life. Mm -hmm. You're meeting them for the first time. You're about to let your child leave the country with this person. And that's what she says to you. <laughs> I'd be in panic. I'd be like, oh my God, I, no, you're not going. You're not going. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but the whole point again, back to your point of like the whole graduation ceremony, not only that, but we weren't going on trips, graduation trips with our class. Like, no. Yeah. And also confusing that the school that you haven't even attended yet is already letting you go on a vacation. Yeah. It's like, welcome to high school. Let's go to Rome. Yeah, what kind of <laughs> high school were you going to? <laughs> exactly. So it's time for Lizzie to say goodbye to her family and her and her mother share an emotional hug. So we're we're all emotional here. And then Ethan pulls us out of our feelings. He says, We're headed to the land of spaghetti. <laughs> and Lizzie expresses she's glad at least Kate isn't coming and 
guess who joins the group to board the plane at the very last minute? In nothing less than a skirt pants, like a pant, what do you call that? Like a two-piece little skirt suit. Oh, her little blazer with her pencil skirt. So cute. No, she's literally dressed like a princess the entire time, (laughs) like a modern day princess the entire movie. I know. I'm like, oh, to first have your fashion, but to also be able to have the confidence to walk around on everyday days just wearing that. Good for you. Like, I know it's (laughs) to have the money to have that fashion. Low key, because you know that is designer. (laughs) That's not cheap. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but also going back to Lizzie saying goodbye to her mom, I, I know you'll agree with this. I love the relationship between Lizzie and her mom, like goals, goals, goals. Seriously. Like they, they argue sometimes and disagree, but at the end of the day, they do love each other and they both love each other. It's not like Mm -hmm. her mom loves her and she's annoyed by her. Like she does see what her mom brings to the table for her and values her and it's it's so sweet i love it we have more foreshadowing now as we arrive in rome and the hotel at the hotel miss ungermeyer is expressing there will be no sneaking out hmm. so we know what's going to happen here <laughs> gordo is assigned to a room with ethan and lizzie is of course assigned to a room with kate gordo appears in lizzie's doorway and pulls her out, taking her up some random stairwell that leads to the rooftop. And they're chatting and end up promising each other that they will have adventures in Rome. More foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> the group is on a tour, and while at the Trevi Fountain, Lizzie makes a wish. When she opens her eyes, we are introduced to Paolo, who thinks Lizzie is his singing partner, Isabella. He begins taking her, talking to her when she gets mobbed by fans who also think she's Isabella. And then they look up and see a photo of Isabella on a billboard. The only difference between Lizzie and Isabella pretty much is that Lizzie is blonde and Isabella is brunette. And Paolo asks to see Lizzie tomorrow. And she says she can't, but he insists that they meet at the fountain at 9 a.m. And he will be waiting for her. (laughs) I mean, first off, who wouldn't want to be mistaken for a pop star, right? I feel like that was like goals. Right? Especially (laughs) at that time when everyone... I mean, first off, who wouldn't want to be mistaken for a pop star, right? I feel like that was like goals. Right? Especially at that time when everyone was so hung up on celebrities and socialites. You're right. That was definitely a different time for that. And then on top of it, this, again, because we love to poke holes in movies now, apparently. But how did Miss (laughs) Ungermeyer not notice like her getting mobbed? By fans coming and being like, hey. And then also, also, she gets handed a big wheel of cheese and nobody questions it. Nobody questions that she has this giant wheel of cheese. What did she say? She said something and he he said something to her and she's like, it's okay, I've got my cheese or something like that. And then the animated Lizzie's like, what did I just say? And then the cheese rolls her over. So now it's nighttime and Lizzie and Gordo meet up at the courtyard of the hotel when Gordo encourages her to meet up with Paolo tomorrow and Lizzie ends up playing sick so that she doesn't have to go on tour with the group today. This was interesting because Gordo was supportive originally. So I just want to put a pin in that because he was originally supportive of her and he may not be later on. We stand Gordo for like, loving Lizzie from afar for the longest time you know he wasn't creepy about it he had a crush I think it was pretty well known. I think she knew right yeah with the yearbook episode it kind of she figures it out and it kisses him on the cheek during their class photo yes okay so I I respected that about him that he wasn't like overly like I'm in love with you you know what I mean Mm -hmm. Like, he could be her friend. He could separate the two. But also, so cutting to the next day when she's saying that she's sick and they're, you know, she's telling the Sungermeyer, I can't go out for the day. I think it's the funny banter between the hotel um, front desk clerk and Miss Ungermeyer where they're talking about how, oh, she must be sick. Did you see her graduation? Oh, yeah, I saw it. It popped up on CNN. Like, it was just so (laughs) funny. So she ends up meeting with Paolo for a quick minute. But he pulls her away for a Vespa ride. So this is not a quick minute anymore. (laughs) And his bodyguard, Sergei, 
is given a run for his money, trying to keep up with them. Paolo is driving her through the city, showing her the sights. I think... I think my favorite part is, Lizzie, I don't have much time. Paolo, yeah, 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 that's cool. Vespa ride through the entire city of Rome. Seriously. <laughs> like, the sky is giving not respectful of boundaries. Yeah. Like, he's at giving, all. Yeah, he's giving, I'm gonna do whatever I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not big on him. Yeah. Obviously, uh, but. <laughs> but this, but I will say this movie and Gossip Girl, obviously. Um, with the Vespas and riding around Europe, it made me think that I needed to do that in my life. I still feel like I should do that in my life. So, bucket list. <laughs> it <laughs> reminds me of Passport to Paris, now that you're talking about it. Oh my god, duh. So this has been ingrained in our head for a while. <laughs> <laughs> this little dream. We then cut back to America. In Matt's bedroom, where Melina is scolding him for not monetizing on the graduation video of Lizzie and just giving it to the news. I love her so much. <laughs> her character is like that's, one of my faves. That's so funny because I'm not big on her. Really? I get her purpose because it's like the one person that Matt will submit to. So it's funny in that sense. But yeah, I don't know. Okay, I that's fair. Like, she's too comes off too strong. That's fair. No, that is fair. Honestly, sometimes she did. I think the comedic aspect of when she doesn't take it too far is the point of where I think yeah. she's funny. But if which I can get, obviously, right? We're women. We can take it too far. So it's okay, Melina. Yeah. I get it. I feel you. <laughs> you were feeling a little emotional that day. It's okay. I, I think the actress does a great job in her yeah. role. I just I'm not big on the character. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That is totally fair. See, so guys, we don't always agree on everything. So back to Rome. Lizzie and Paolo. Lizzie's group bus pulls up right behind them. And Lizzie starts panicking. But Paolo cannot legally move forward. He has to wait. So Gordo, who's on the bus, sees them. And he creates a diversion. But Miss Ungermeyer sees right through him. The little sneaky brown <laughs> noser. And gets upset the bus isn't moving so she's having road rage even though she's not the driver and she ends up running out to the street to yell at the cars to move and sergey is right in front of the bus because he's in between the bus and lizzie and he turns around and gives her a weird look it's obviously the start of like a blossoming potential romance like of the that two tension. of them or yeah. a friendship no, I think my favorite part, you want a piece of me? You want a piece of the hunger mire? <laughs> yeah, they're like definitely building that tension between them. Yeah, and he just looks at her like, girl, what? So Lizzie and Paolo make a clean getaway, and Paolo tells Lizzie more about Isabella. He shares that they had a difference in opinion when it came to their music, and Isabella quit and they broke up. He also takes a dig and mentions Isabella always lip synced and that he sang and wrote all of their music. He shares that Isabella was supposed to present an award with him at a show that is coming up and ask Lizzie to fill in for her. She says no. And guess what happens? Paolo persuades her because he can't take no for an answer. Mm. Like serious we boundary issues here. Yeah, we don't like this guy. He's definitely lacks boundary issues. Yeah. Fun fact I'm going to throw in right here. Um, the guy who plays Paolo also plays Officer Garrett in Pretty Little Liars. That's interesting. I It took me years to... I read it online, and I didn't like make that connection on my own. And let me tell you, it blew my mind. I was like, no way, this is the same person, <laughs> but it is. They look totally, like, he looks totally different in this other role? Yeah, because he's got shorter hair in that. Okay. And he's a cop, so he's always in uniform versus the pop star with the flippy long hair. So, You're right. But it is him. Fun fact there. Uh, Lizzie and Gordo meet up, and she tells him about the plan. And now we see jealousy rise in Gordo. He implies she's moving too fast and she doesn't like that and leaves the room. And Ethan sees right through Gordo and calls him out on his jealousy. 
but Gordo denies, denies, denies. Can I say, in this movie, I am so here for, like, the quote-unquote friendship between Ethan and Gordo, because, like, they never really had any, like, long-standing scenes together, really, because, like, there was no real interaction between the two of them, per se. I mean, there was a little bit, but I just think it's funny to see how, like, we see Ethan as this jock who doesn't really pay attention, but, like, in this movie, we're finding out, oh, he was actually kind of paying attention the entire time. It's interesting that you say the friendship between them is interesting, because Gordo specifically says at this moment, this is why I'm not friends with you, because Mm -hmm. it's like talking to a wall and insults his intelligence. And... Even in the series, you do see Ethan always trying to engage with Gordo. And it feels like Ethan considers Gordo a friend. He wants to be his friend, mm-hmm. which is unusual yeah. in the stereotypical world it's because like he's a jock. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Like, he's, I love e- how Ethan is portrayed in the movie. He's, he's not as stupid. Like, they kind of went over the top with the stupidity in the show. And it's like, no, he sees what's going on, and he is being a friend to Gordo. <laughs> yeah, I, I really liked that. He was he was definitely a good framing character, and he, yeah, he definitely brought something to the movie. Yes. And I, I like that he kind of calls Gordo out on his BS and is like, yo. <laughs> yes, I love <laughs> Ethan's role in this movie. Yeah. So skip back to Matt and Melina. They discover Isabella and Lizzie's resemblance, and Matt is ready to snitch on his sister to get her in trouble. But Melina pushes him to his senses and points out that all of the embarrassing footage he has on her, he can sell to the tabloids in Italy now because she's in them. Oh my god, that's so funny. At this point, I'm wondering, though, where is Lanny? Like, Lanny is my favorite friend of Matt's. (laughs) His ability to say nothing without, but also by saying so much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I get that Melina is adding dialogue, but I feel like Matt and Lanny are that dynamic duo. Yeah. It would have almost been interesting if like he had come with him to Italy to try to sell the footage, you know, like that was Melina's yeah. moment. And then in Italy, it was like, Lanny's I keep wanting to call him Larry I do this all the time (laughs) speaking of Larry why wasn't he in the movie good point right he wasn't either Tudgeman would have been funny to see too yeah yeah I know they a couple missed opportunities here I wonder if they cut him out because Lelaine wasn't in the movie and maybe they could have done rooms of three if she was and then that would have been interesting to have Gordo Larry and Ethan in a room that would have been fun you're right. That would have been interesting. Yeah, either they didn't have that or even so after that, if they had wanted to even break off into two and two, they still didn't have that either because they wouldn't have had another person to root with him. Is there another yeah. guy that would have? Is there another, like, guy that would have qualified? Uh, I don't think so. We had Danny no, right? Kessler for a few episodes at the very beginning of the series, but... Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to get... A little bit cunty. Lizzie is still playing sick in her room, so Miss Ungermeyer assigns her reading, and we skip to her going out with Paolo again, to the sounds of Hilary Duff's iconic song, Why Not? And Paolo takes Lizzie to her first ever fitting, where everyone thinks she is Isabella and treats her like royalty. And this is where we get that stereotypical 2010 movie outfit montage what we see actually is instead of finding that perfect look we end with lizzie not liking any of these options and takes a stand for herself and commands to control to pick out her own outfit i found this interesting because we know lizzie to be very soft not as you know I don't want to say confident, but willing to kind of stick up for herself because she is confident, but not willing to stick up for herself as much. Maybe let somebody who is a professional take, you know, take over and, you know, make that decision for her. And I like that we kind of got a little bit of that flip where she was like, no, I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling good here. I'm going to 
voice my opinion. Yeah, it was almost like, I'm Isabella, I'm going to be a diva right now. Yeah, you're right. It was kind of like she was stepping into that pop star role. And we were kind of seeing that that shift. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, I mean, beyond iconic having Why Not in this movie. I fucking love that song. Even to this day, if I'm feeling um, worried or doubtful of something I'm pursuing... I pop that on and I listen to it like two or three times and I feel better. That's actually a really smart thing to do. Um, (laughs) The song was an earwig in my ear today randomly, which was ironic since we're recording the movie. It, it can be viewed as a little cheesy tween pop song, but it does have a good message even to this day. Mm -hmm. God, I love our, our era because it just, it stays (laughs) relevant. It's so true. And honestly, I'm a I'm a stick like a person who loves to like get up in my feels. So like I'll read lyrics and like try to like interpret things from them. And so mm-hmm. um this song specifically like definitely gives you the chance to really just like pick it apart and make it really f- like what you want it to be for you in that moment. Yeah. I love like I mean, of course it was a little bit over the top, but she says you'll never get to heaven or even to LA if you don't believe there's a way. Like, take out Mm -hmm. those, you know, heaven and LA and put whatever you're wanting. Mm -hmm. You you gotta believe in yourself or you're not gonna get anywhere in life. 100%. The line that sticks out to me always is the one where it's like, you uh, always dress in yellow when you want to dress in gold. Yeah, I love that one too. (laughs) It's just like, for that one, I take it literal, and it's like, just dress how you want to dress. That one, I take more... That's interesting. I take it more like... um, Because then the next line is, instead of doing what you want, you do just what you're told. And so, yes. for me, it's very like, make a decision for yourself and do what you want to do for yourself. It, like, it's one of those things where it's like, no, you can make that decision. It's very Yeah. Don't very stay muted. Yeah. Yeah. The whole song's good. <laughs> Filled with great metaphors. <laughs> totally. We just picked apart the song now, too. <laughs> Bonus song analysis. <laughs> okay, so... Meanwhile, while the the fashion show is going on, Lizzie's classmates are at the Coliseum, and we see Kate and Ethan fighting. And this <laughs> establishes that they are exes, because Miss Ungermeyer hears them bickering and says separate and Kate says oh we already have so and thank god I you know we knew that they went on dates and stuff but this kind of establishes that they did have a relationship and they are now broken up I want the backstory on that yeah I'm sure they couldn't have gone too serious with it on the channel is my guess yeah so they kind of spiced it up a little bit for the theater. <laughs> yeah, but it was always interesting. Was... And then Gordo approaches two girls and they express they like Ethan. But Gordo's interested in the magazine of Isabella that they're holding. And he makes a deal with them to keep the magazine if he introduces them to Ethan. AKA word. <laughs> yes, word. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao, word. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan is a great addition to this movie. I'm really glad they incorporated him. I love him. And I even said to you, like, he's just stereotypical surfer dude funny. Like, that's that's what he yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, like, he has a heart of gold. Totally. Like, exactly. The the jock guy typically is a jerk, but he is a sweetheart. And so that's what makes him so lovable. Yeah. We stand, Ethan. And Lizzie again hits a town with Paolo and launches Isabella as a blonde publicly. And she's meeting fans and signing autographs. Then she sees her classmates again. She ducks. Gordo sees her and again tries to create a distraction so the group doesn't see her. They are heading back to the hotel and Lizzie is racing back to her room. The group gets back and Sergei exercises his power as a bodyguard (laughs) to prevent Miss Ungermeyer from using the elevator until Lizzie is back in her room. Oh my gosh. So, once we get through all of that, 
Miss Ungermeyer gets to Lizzie's room to go check on her and asks Kate to look after her. And Kate calls her out for leaving. And at this point, Lizzie is still tucked in her bed. So she's like, what are you talking about? Uh, Kate points out she has highlights in her hair. Her eyebrows finally match and she's got a fresh manicure and she rips the, the blanket off of Lizzie. So she demands an explanation and Lizzie tells her everything. And Kate is confused why Lizzie is getting the experience Kate should be having on this trip. And she agrees to keep quiet about this, though. And then Gordo knocks on the door, wanting to speak to Lizzie privately, but Kate tells him she already knows everything. So he shows them the magazine, which says Paolo and Isabella are set to not only present an award at this show, but also to sing. He says it's a bit suspicious he didn't mention that to Lizzie, but Lizzie defends Paolo. Gordo gets upset and leaves the room. Okay. We've got a lot so, to unpack here. Yeah, a lot happened so. <laughs> in this scene. <laughs> so, first of all, again, at the beginning when they're getting back to the hotel, we get another little uh, scene between Miss Ungermeyer and Sergei, which it's just, <laughs> there's tension, there's possibly a brewing romance. There, we just see that there's a chemistry between the two of these people through their hatred and anger for each other, <laughs> getting in each other's ways. <laughs> And I just think it's so funny how basically she's running around like all angry and Sergei's always just like just standing there so calm. Like it's just always so funny to me. Right? Yeah. He he stays very balanced. I don't know yeah. how to like even tempered. That yeah. would be the word. Yeah, she doesn't phase him in the slightest. And I think that's so funny. <laughs> and then the and then with Kate, so when up uh, Kate figuring out that she had left. Okay, sure, maybe the highlights and stuff, but the nails were under the sheets. But then I remembered that didn't she say like I can smell I can smell acetone from the lobby. Yes. Okay, yes. so that's where I was like, okay, that checks out. What I'm confused by is why Kate doesn't ruin it for her. Why not tell Miss Ungermeyer? Yes, and I think that's one of those moments, and we get a few of those in the series where there. It their previous friendship, you know, they still have a little bit of a space for each other in their hearts. Yeah. Or at least Kate does for Lizzie. And I mean, who to to ruin somebody's experience of getting to be a pop star for a week. That's I mean, a good point. that's gonna be a story she can tell later. <laughs> Gordo kinda needs to low key chill out a little bit. Like I understand he's trying to help and he's trying to like protect his friend, but Getting, men should know this, getting upset is not going to get what you want. It's not going to end in the result that you want. You have to come in with kindness and grace because you have to understand that she's, a lot's happening for her. Yeah, I get his side though. He's trying to warn her of something that's not sitting right with him. And he does have feelings, but I think even if he didn't, he would still do this because okay. that's just Gordo. Gordo's very cynical and skeptical. That's a good point that you make, honestly. She's kind of in her cloud nine. Nothing can stop me right now and just keeps brushing him off. But we'll get into that later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair point. Fair point. So we're back at the McGuire's house now. Matt and his parents are speaking. While we think he's about to snitch on Lizzie, he instead presents a pie chart. And he shares that most Italian men want an American girl. <laughs> he is getting nowhere with this presentation. His parents are like, what are you up to? And so he admits he misses his sister. And Joe says she misses her too and comforts Matt. Then they decide to go to Italy and find Lizzie. And this is when we see Matt is faking this and he's plotting this so he can get to Italy and go through with his tabloid plan. I have questions. Um, as a middle-class working family, you just sent your daughter off to Italy. I'm sure that wasn't cheap. You're telling me you've got last minute flights for all three of you to go to Italy randomly? Where you got that money? Who's working? So do we know that they're middle class though? I mean, they're stereotypically, like, 
a de- like a normal all American middle class family. I feel. But then when you think about it, like how is Lizzie dressed so cute all the time? They've got the digital bean money, oh you my know, God, digital bean. It wasn't until this point that I started thinking about this because I had the same question as you. And then I really started diving in and it's, I don't know. I was considered like lower middle class growing up and we lived paycheck to paycheck. So having, Mm -hmm. and you and I both had divorced parents. So it's single parent income household. They've got two incomes coming in. Yeah. Where do they technically live? Like, are they like, where is the show based out of? Never established. So it's a big question mark. Mm. See, they really left it open-ended because they really didn't want to answer that question, I feel. Right. Yeah. Huh. Very interesting. We now see Lizzie and Paolo as she's confronting him about the singing. He says he will explain if she gets in the car. Kill me. <laughs> He takes her to a beautiful countryside mansion and explains that Isabella refuses to sing, but if they don't, she will get sued, and it's up to Lizzie to save Isabella from that. It's a manipulation for me. (laughs) When she expresses her concern about singing, he says he will teach her how to lip sync. He then takes her under a waterfall where he vows to never embarrass her, Lizzie McGuire. Lizzie then agrees, and they run the town. They find a fireworks show where they share a moment, and Paolo tells her she's beautiful and holds her hand. The scene hands over to poor Gordo, who is going through it. All of this toxic manipulation. As soon as she doubted what he was trying to get her to do, he was like, I'll bet you're an American. You want me to romanticize you. Okay, great. Here's this beautiful countryside. Here are the fireworks. Look, let me tell you how beautiful you are. Toxic ass man behavior. If you look back when they first meet and she says, I I can't meet with you tomorrow morning at the fountain. He uses that do as the Romans do. And he says, well, when most people come to Rome, they want adventure. I guess you don't. So he's been gaslighting her this whole time. Literally can't stand him. And also, ugh. I put I put a comment here, but now I don't know how much I feel about it. I said, <laughs> I don't even want to say it. Yeah, I do kind of feel bad for Gordo here, right? I originally don't think I like felt as bad, but like looking back on it now and kind of looking at the grand scheme of things, like, yeah, you should be happy for your friend to an extent, but I think he was going through some emotions, not only like trying to understand his own feelings, but also trying to find the right way to be happy for his friend who was also potentially being manipulated by this guy so he he really is going through it yeah he's processing that and we're led to believe that that is his intentions and Mm -hmm. the underlying root here but you know we've all seen the movie or you should have pushed pause and watched it first sorry guys (laughs) spoiler but you know he knows in his gut that paolo is not a good guy Mm -hmm. and I do truly feel that even if he did not like Lizzie, he would be acting the same way. You know, now that you mentioned that, I think I agree with you because based on the type of, like, who Gordo was throughout the series and who he is in the movie, like, you make a really good point. Regardless of if he had feelings, like, he would have done the same thing for Miranda if it was the opposite. Like, because he didn't have feelings like that for her, but he was a good friend to her. Yeah, and even way back before we see anything of him having a crush when Ronnie breaks up with her Mm -hmm. they're in the library and she's crying and um she says he got a new girlfriend I bet she's cooler than me and way prettier than me and Gordo says that's impossible no one's cooler or prettier than you and there's no underlying intentions yeah yeah he just says that to his friend so He's always been that way to her. Cut to a plane where we see the rest of the McGuire family. And Matt gets caught with a magazine that has Lizzie slash Isabella on the cover. And parents see it and demand answers. So we're left to assume he tells them what's going on. And now (laughs) we're back to the hotel. Miss Ungermeyer is about to check on Lizzie when Gordo tries to stop her. 
Miss Ungermeyer says she bets Lizzie has been faking it the whole time and has been sneaking out. Gordo says she's partially right, but it's him who has been sneaking out. So he is protecting her. And so, so Miss Ungermeyer tells Gordo to pack his bags because he is going home. And this was interesting to me. I felt like this was a movie continuity scene because I feel like there's a whole lot of things happened here that didn't make sense. So I get like she potentially thought that Gordo was the one that was sneaking out and she tells him to pack his bags. But I feel like in most situations, if you realize that somebody was like telling you that they were sneaking out, you're probably not going to let them out of your sight anymore as a teacher or a guardian or whatever. You're going to go up there with them. You're going to make them pack with you standing there. And you're going to probably personally, if not get somebody else who's staffed, to take them to the airport. But that's that's that. But also, even so, even if you thought that he ended up being the person that was sneaking out, wouldn't you still go check on Lizzie? Because she's still been sick. Right. He doesn't do that. And I thought that was really weird. She just takes it for what it is and like walks away. Maybe these things did happen, but they're not shown. Or maybe they cut it out for time's sake. I don't know. Probably. No, it's it's honestly probably movie continuity. Like, I, we're not supposed to break it down this hard. It's not that yeah. serious. <laughs> <laughs> so in the next scene, we are back with Lizzie and Paolo in a studio. He is teaching her how to lip sync, and she's not great at it. So he shares, <laughs> actually singing will help. The mic will be off, so it doesn't matter how she'll sound. She gets the hang of that, and then they start focusing on the choreography. So... I love Hillary to death. I really do. But the girl doesn't dance. And everything that we saw with actual choreography was from the back. So I have to ask, is that a body double? You know, I was watching, because you'd mentioned this to me before I started watching the movie. And so I was like, I'm going to see if I can notice. You really, they obviously, I mean, they're going to do a good job so you can't notice. But... I'm pretty convinced. I mean, we all saw that, what was it, Good Morning America, where she's like... Yes. Yeah, yeah. We we all saw it, okay? <laughs> the with love performances. Yeah, where she's brunette and she's got the dress on. Yeah. 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 So Lizzie gets back to the hotel and Kate tells her about Gordo. She panics and tries to stop the situation, but ultimately she's powerless. And the plane has taken off already. So she feels terrible about letting him take the fall for her. This was so emotional. This honestly was like a very like in your feels moment where she like cuts and starts crying. And she's like really disappointed that he's like not going to. It gave me like raise your voice vibes a little bit in this moment. I don't know why. Yeah, it, it is emotional. And I mean, that action in itself speaks that he does want her to have, you know, to cease the day in, in Rome And he sacrificed his trip for her. Yeah, because really, like, as he had been supporting her through it all, but we didn't really know, like, where his level of support was. And this really shows, like, he was in it for her. He was down to let her have, like, whatever adventure she was going to have. So it, like, really tugs on the heartstrings for not only us, but also, like, her, too. Because she's like, oh, my God, like, he was actually, you know, supporting me. And then we're at the airport where we see... Isabella for the first time uh we also see Gordo still there so he tells her as she's catching up that there's an imposter so he tells her that it's his best friend who is the quote imposter and she's not an imposter she's actually trying to prevent Isabella from getting sued and he demands to know more about Paolo and so they agree to talk and they give each other information the Italian like Lizzie like Hillary was always so funny to me I mean I loved her I thought she was fabulous as a brunette um but her little Italian accent was always just so funny and just cracked me up so the McGuire's arrive to the hotel and are having no luck communicating (laughs) with the front desk to find Lizzie luckily Miss Ungermeyer is around and she overhears the conversation she takes them to the room where they all see Lizzie and Kate are gone Miss Ungermeyer knows exactly who will know what's going on. And he and she heads over to Ethan's room demanding answers. <laughs> and he caves and tells them about the award show. I feel like this was a great 
moment for Ethan as well. It really pulls him back in, ties him in, and this is where it shows his role. And that he truly is a friend to Lizzie and Gordo, whether they understand that or not. He is invested in them as people. He's paying attention. He's looking out for them, even though he just broke down and snitched. But (laughs) he has been holding secrets for them. Yeah, no, I think it was great that the movie gave more substance to Ethan as a character. I really appreciated that. Lizzie is hitting the red carpet with Paolo, waving to fans. And in true Lizzie nature, she trips and falls. (laughs) But this time, she gets up and keeps it moving. So they're now backstage getting ready, and Lizzie is nervous. Paolo begins to comfort her and encourages her. He tells her she shines like a light from the sun and kisses her on the cheek. You shine like a light from the sun? What does that even mean? Cheap, cheesy, it's meant to make the girl melt. Oh, oh my god. Gordo appears and tells Lizzie that Paolo is setting her up. Then Isabella appears and says, actually, Paolo is setting her up. Apparently, Paolo has been lying about everything. Paolo is the one that lip syncs and is trying to set Lizzie up to embarrass Isabella. Lizzie says that she doesn't believe them, and she goes to walk away when Isabella asks, who is she going to believe? A boy she has known her whole life, or a boy she's known for a few days, who says things like, you shine like a light from the sun. So Lizzie scoffs, and then she goes and takes a look at Paolo, who smiles at her. She smiles and is fighting tears really bad. And then she turns around and agrees to work with Isabella and tells her to go sing. Isabella says she cannot go out there because Paolo will know. But she has a plan and Lizzie just needs to go change clothes and get on stage. So, of course, iconically, when Isabella and Lizzie meet, we get an iconic parent trap moment with dark haired Lizzie and blonde Lizzie. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's so cheesy. <laughs> oh, I know, but we we loved it. I really I really felt it in the moment when you kind of see Lizzie switch and she really sees how badly he was manipulating her, how toxic he really was cuz she was really infatuated with this guy and she really thought like he was going to protect her and really just give her this like superstar moment essentially. It's something I wish I would have picked up on as a younger girl watching this um now i see it's textbook and i hope you know when mothers today are showing it to their daughters they're like here's a red flag here's a red flag here's a red flag if a boy is doing this to you stand your ground double down on your no and walk away yeah totally we then see the adults matt and ethan trying to get into the show but security will not let them through. They are no match for Miss Ungermeyer. Oh my god, the way she karate chops her way in was just so freaking great. Lizzie then goes on stage and the music starts. Isabella goes to the stage tech and tells her to, tells him to turn down Lizzie's mic. The song starts and Paolo goes to sing. Then it's Lizzie's turn. And instead of hearing Lizzie's voice, we hear Isabella's voice. Moments later, we hear Paolo's real voice, which is not it. And the real Isabella comes out onto the stage, stage singing and revealing the plan. And then she says, No, you give us this iconic line. I got the other one. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Sing to me, Paolo. Oh. <laughs> he runs off stage and Isabella introduces Lizzie McGuire to the world. And backstage, we see Sergey. Defend Lizzie, and he quits his job as Paolo's bodyguard. That made me love Sergei even more. I mean, again, I already loved him. He was very sweet. But the fact that we know that he he really legitimately did have Lizzie's best interest in heart, and he said, you, well, he says something like, you tried to hurt Lizzie McGuire. Like, Mm -hmm. and she's a nice girl. That's what it is. Yeah. And she's a nice girl. So it's good to know that, like, while he did work for Paolo, like, he was a decent, genuine guy. He wasn't loyal. He was good. Yes. And then we get the iconic scene of this movie where Lizzie and Isabella sing, This is what dreams are made of. Made of. And we get the 
iconic green screen shot of Lizzie singing out to the Coliseum. Oh my gosh. You know, <laughs> back in the day, I thought that's where they were. Her outfit, definitely iconic pop star with the whole throwaway skirt that was very 2009. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> oh, and then the whole pantsuit. Loved. It gave me Britney Spears vibes, definitely, because you yes. know she had like a whole outfit like that. Yeah, she would do that a lot in her shows. That wraps up, and we see Kate and Ethan are having dinner, where Kate is disappointed that this was not her experience. And then Ethan says, actually, what she did for Lizzie was hot. <laughs> he was very impressed that she had Lizzie's back. Again, Stan, Ethan, and, you know, it's a redeeming moment for Kate, too. And then... We're led, led to think that they end up making up, even, you know, it might just be friends, it might be more, but we assume they don't hate each other anymore. Yeah, I first of all, I like, I think I like them better as friends anyway. I mean, like, obviously the whole popular girl and the jock, like it was meant to be in the series, but I feel like they, they're more of a better duo as like sassy friends together. Yeah. So then we wrap up with Lizzie reunited with her parents and Gorda speaking with Miss Ungermeyer. She tells him Lizzie told her everything and that he is a loyal friend and loyalty goes a long way with her. So he has finally won her over. <laughs> I thought that was a very sweet moment. And honestly, it made me like choke up a little bit because yeah. he just wanted, he cares so much about his education and he just it was really important to get her approval. I thought it was I thought it was cute that they became full circle. Then we see her with Sergey and Romance Sparks. Yes. Matt speaks with the hotel manager, showing his footage collection of Lizzie, thinking he's a paparazzi. And the manager scolds him for blackmailing his sister and destroys the tape by throwing it into the fountain. <laughs> Lizzie and Gordo sneak away to the rooftop to talk about the night. And Lizzie then kisses him on the lips and thanks him for his support and he says you're welcome then go back so they don't get into any more trouble than they are already in and that's where it ends and we get the credits and i just wanted to say i noticed this by chance at the end credits one of the cute girls with the magazines her real name is katie saunders so it's like a nod to kate sanders i like that that's cute okay you said you had a thought like we got all these wrap-ups and i thought they were nice but, well, they weren't really wrap-ups. They were more like open-ended kind of wrap-ups to the actual movie. Like, they covered the plot, but they left an open end. And I feel like they did that on purpose because they were potentially going to try to take them to high school. But, obviously, they never did. I kind of wish they would have. I think Lizzie in high school would have been extremely interesting. I wonder if they were hoping Lizzie wouldn't, or I'm sorry, Hillary wouldn't actually leave. Yeah, like really wanted to stick with Lizzie because even to this day we see Hillary speak very fondly over the Lizzie character and she yeah. cares very much about her. So I wonder if they were planning on using that. Yeah, well, like you said at the beginning, I didn't realize there was like a a battle between well, not battle, I shouldn't say battle, that there was tension between Lizzie's mom who was trying to advocate for I mean Lizzie's mom <laughs> Hillary's mom who was advocating for her and trying to make sure that she was getting a fair deal with Disney and Disney who clearly didn't want to give her a fair deal so it's it's clear that they left the door open in case they could come to an agreement but it looks like they clearly never did yeah and plus we know Hillary from that I, I guess has learned to advocate for herself even in Hollywood because of the whole reboot situation with when that didn't work for her, she walked away. She said, this doesn't serve me, and she walked away. Okay, well, we'll wrap up here with our conclusion of New Phone Who Dis. So the quote was, drink water upside down, put a pencil in your mouth. <laughs> so Amber, what what is your answer for that? It's the hills, right? Yes, Heidi yeah. says it. <laughs> <laughs> that line's so iconic. I remember on Whitney and Timmy's version when they do their rewatch timmy just cracks up but anyway thank you all for tuning in to another episode of posh and plastic please rate and review if you're on audio and to all of our listeners please subscribe and we will catch you back here next throwback thursday and we are talking about john tucker must die <laughs> all right bye guys bye